Hi, it's Jo from Minerva. If you've popped over to Minerva and you've seen everybody's makes, you might think that maybe, oh, well, I can't sew, so I don't really want to post anything on there. But we would like to encourage all members of our sewing community to take part. It would be easy to look at all the things that people are making and think that you're not at that level yet. But we would like to help you to start sewing with our new course, which is 10 episodes on Back to Basics. In our Back to Basics set of videos, we'd like to show you right from the very start how to learn to start to sew. It's really easy to start sewing um, and you can build your skills through time, but with very few basic skills, you can learn to make really simple things for your home and for yourself. With all of the sewing products that you see on the Minerva's website, it's sometimes tricky to think which ones do I really, really need. So I'm going to take you today through some of the things that will get you started if you're an absolute never sewn before sewer. I'd like to think that um, you can sew from a really small space. I think that's a perception that people think they don't have the space to sew or they don't have a special room to go and sew in or a special designated sewing space. But I like to think that you can learn to sew if you can find a shoebox. In the shoebox, to get you started, I'd like you to think about getting a pair of scissors. These are my sewing scissors. They've got quite a deep arm on so that I can cut fabric at this angle. I'm right-handed, so I make sure that I've got a right-handed pair, but you can also check out left-handed scissors on our website. And I tie a little ribbon around them and that stops me using them for anything else. And it signals to the rest of my family, don't go near my sewing scissors. So first of all, pop those in your shoebox. Next, you'll need to be thinking about measuring things. So I use a tape measure. It's got metric on one side and imperial on the other. Sometimes if I'm using an American pattern or I'm quilting, then it will be in inches. And sometimes if I'm using a European sewing pattern, then I'll need to use the millimetres and centimetres. A flexible one is for measuring yourself. You see some people keep it around their neck. I find it a bit distracting around my neck, but um, I use a different tool for when I'm working at the table. So, so get yourself a tape measure so you can measure fabric and yourself. Pop it in your shoebox. Because I always seem to get tangled up with a tape measure around my neck, I really love having this tool. It's a seam gauge. And if you've never sewn before, you might see it and wonder what it is. It's just like a mini ruler. It's got a slide on it so you can put it in a particular position and hold that position there. And you can measure things like hems, you can measure seam allowances, you can measure small areas on a worktop. It's got a point on the end, which is a point turner. So that's for turning out corners. So if you're making a tote bag, you can get nice corners. And the other end is for adding buttons and for making a button shank, but I can show you that too. Seam gauge is really inexpensive, but it's a really useful tool to have. You'll need some pins. I use glass head pins because if you get the glass head ones, then you can press and you won't melt the heads. You can get all sorts of different pins. It depends what your project is. So sometimes you can get uh, quilting ones, which have got a larger head on, which hold the different layers down. But if you're just starting out, then get yourself a tin of glass head pins. You'll need some hand sewing needles. I keep mine in a little jar. They're all different sizes, but a multi-pack is fine. Um, depends what your eyesight's like, whether you want a small eye or a larger eye. And the tips will have a different element of bluntness. So some will be for thicker fabrics and some will be for finer fabrics. You'll need some kind of marking tool for marking fabrics. And there's absolutely loads out there to try. There's different, there's chalks, there's chalk pencils, there's different pens. Um, the one I would choose as a starter is a pen. This is an air erasable pen. So when I mark the fabric, after about five minutes, it disappears. So this isn't any good for cutting things out one day and sewing the next, but it's great for marking as you go along. I'd start with something like this. You may not feel you want to buy this as the start of your sewing kit, but you will need an unpicker. An unpicker has a little ball on the end to stop you catching the fabric and a uh, a sheer end and a blade in between and you use that to run along the stitches to unpick them. I'll show you how to use one of those properly um, in the starts of our videos but you need to get one because you will always need an unpicker. 
last couple of things you'll need some thread gutterman thread spray it's really good quality it's particularly good for um sewing knits because you're putting knits under a different amount of stretch and it's good for garment sewing because it's really long lasting this is a polyester ball sew thread so that's a good one to have in your box and i also like to have a couple of safety pins for when i'm threading elastic and i don't want to go and look for one and i don't want to find one that's too small it makes the job really difficult so i always have a nice big safety pin that i hide from everybody else in my sewing box so you can see my sewing box has still got loads more room in it but that's all the things that i need to start sewing there's even space for a pattern and your first piece of fabric so you really don't need a whole spare room devoted to sewing you can just keep your sewing things in a shoe box and somewhere for you to keep a sewing machine these 10 episodes in the back to basics sewing course include uh, your sewing kit which we're doing today choosing the correct fabric cutting and preparing your fabric setting up your sewing machine and obviously that's going to be different for different sewing machines some basic sewing techniques which stitches to use under the machine how to thread up your machine and some of the um, things that might happen that don't get your stitch as you would want it and we're going to look at some basic hand sewing uh, we're going to try two projects that will give you a little homeware thing that you can try out using a straight stitch and we're going to do two garment sew alongs so we're going to make uh, some pajama bottoms and a top. I hope you'll stick through the course from episode one to episode 10 and by the end of it you'll be able to share your makes at Minerva.com. If you become a craft club member you'll get 10% off all of your orders for the whole year um, which is really useful if you're starting up sewing because if you want to get some kit together then you'll get 10% off all of your new kit. If you've become a craft club member and you think well i want to really get my kit going and i'm really keen to start this then there might be a few other tools that you might want to add to your kit the first thing i always recommend especially if you've not sewn with your sewing machine for a long time or you've been given your sewing machine and you've got it going and you're quite pleased is to put a new needle in this is a set of universal needles it goes um, from size 80 uh, to 90 and sometimes to 100 depends which pack you get but you'll need an 80 needle to sew most cottons. A few other little tools if you want to treat yourself is a, a, mag, a pin magnet. So some people wear a um, pin cushion on their wrist so pins are easy to get to. I'm too clumsy. I always knock it or put it on the wrong arm and have it stuck in my sewing machine aperture. Um, but you can get a pin cushion for your wrist or I like to use a pin magnet. As I take pins out under the sewing machine, I can just sort of throw them towards the pin magnet and they stick. And then I can put them all back later. It's superb if you drop your pin tin and you can just pick up all of your pins. A tool that I wish I'd had much sooner, but I've only just bought one and I've been sewing for 20 years, but I've bought myself a hot hammer and it's a little piece of special material, like a sort of, um, fuzzy felt and you can use it for turning up hems so you can put it on the ironing board fold up your fabric and iron it and because I can iron this the pattern doesn't come off it's really great you can make really nice curves it's a little extra but I find this to be something that I wish I'd had years and years ago another tool that's an extra which is something you might want to invest in or put on your birthday list is a set of tube turners and these are called uh, prim tube turners and they are for turning out straps so if you're making something with strap on which is um, probably quite likely when you're a new sewer because sometimes you have wrap skirts with a tie and you have things with a, a tie or a waistband on because you don't want to be able to put zips in or anything straight away and you put the tube into your tube of fabric and then you can use the stick to push it back through and it saves all that flapping and poking and stabbing it with a knitting needle and all the things that spoil your strap when you can turn it out really quickly with a set of tube turners. Finally, my marking tool of choice, even though I've put an air erasable pen in my shoe box, is um, this pen set. And it's a retractable pen and there's a chalk that goes inside, a really nice opaque chalk, not a chalk that you have to really, really 
rub your fabric with, this chalk comes out really nicely. It comes with a set of different colour chalk, so if you're using different coloured fabrics, you can choose the correct chalk. And you also get a little pencil sharpener, especially for the chalk, so it fits into the end. And you can get a really, really sharp point on the end of your chalk for making really fine marks. So sometimes I find a uh, tailor's chalk is okay, but then it starts to get a bit blunt and I get chalk on my hands that sticks to everything else. Whereas this, I can keep clean hands, I have a sharp point, I have really good quality chalk in it. It's a little bit more expensive, but again, if I bought one of these right from the start rather than tailor's chalk, then I'd tried to chalk pencil, then I'd tried a better quality chalk pencil, and actually I wish I'd just bought this right from the start. So those are my few extra things if you're looking to move your sewing kit on just a little bit more. Even with my extra things, it still fits in my shoe box. I can keep my shoe box and my sewing machine in the bottom of my wardrobe, I can keep it in the cupboard under the stairs. It's quite a small amount of stuff that you can use to get started. Do come back for episode two where we take a look at how to choose fabric that's really suitable for beginners and how to make sure that you get something that means you can get a really successful make on your first. Day.